Um, so first, I want to start a show of hands. Who has a car? Who has a car that they drive? All right, lots of people. Who's found themselves wanting to pull their hair out when they're unable to find parking in that car? <laughs> yeah, big issues, right? Um, so for me, I live in San Francisco. And to give you an idea, this is an example of a parking sign. Um, I don't know about you, but I can't even tell when I should park there or not. So I'm just going to keep looking for other spots. Um, and this is actually really common around San Francisco and around a lot of um, dense cities um, where parking rules can change um, uh, depending on the hour of the day or the day of the week. Um, and this is something that's a real issue, and people get parking tickets all the time. Um, I probably have way too many to be proud of, so I'm not going to tell you how many I actually have. Um, but so it's a really difficult problem, and um, especially with autonomous cars coming to fruition, um, this is something that we're going to have to be able to take care of um, automatically without having to figure out where someone can park or what time they can park. Um, so what we want to be able to do is actually detect um, where are the parking signs um, and then extract the rules from those parking signs so that um, we can actually have intelligent information and um, avoid getting all those pesky parking tickets. Um, so just to give you an idea, um, there's actually been a lot of work um, that's done in this field. Um, so here you can see there's actually um, been pushes to redesign parking signs so that they're actually more easily readable. Um, so you can just look at the parking guide and see, OK, am I able to park here or not? Um, and there's a variety of reasons why we want to um, speed up this process. Um, for one, it makes the streets a lot safer. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm driving around down the road, and suddenly the person in front of me stops because they're reading six different parking signs on the side. Um, that causes all kinds of traffic. It causes pedestrian issues. Um, and so we want to avoid a lot of this. And what we can do is actually leverage um, deep learning and machine learning to actually help us um, reduce these problems. Um, and there's even apps out there that are actually um, trying to fix this issue. So Spot Angels is a popular app that people use in San Francisco. And they actually give you um, regions around the city that are available parking. Um, but again, this isn't anything really intelligent. Basically, what they do is um, they just like go around the city and kind of index where all of the parking spots are. and then um, predict whether or not it's going to be available, but no one's actually doing any um, real deep learning or AI on, on this problem. Um, and so once we have apps like this and apps that are actually intelligent, you can start to imagine um, getting parking notifications to say, hey, your parking is running out. Um, this parking section is going to turn into a street cleaning in the next 30 minutes, so you might want to move your car and avoid getting towed or um, getting a ticket. Um, and this is something that is uh, really applicable to a number of different areas. Um, so really, how can we leverage AI to help us um, facilitate these parking issues and uh, make sure that we can avoid getting tickets, improve the traffic situation, and um, help pedestrian safety? Um, so for one, I'm sure many of you might have seen these Google cars driving around. So why don't we just um, use the information that they've collected on their cameras. Um, you can see they have ca nine directional cameras on the car. Um, and there's a number of companies that are doing this. Um, Google, Microsoft, Gear Technologies. Um, they're all really trying to map the world um, and understand not only parking, but buildings and streets and signs. Um, and so we can actually, there's a lot of this data that's available. So what we did is we actually um, pulled a lot of the images from the Google API um, street view to actually um, collect the data that we really need to um, create these models. Um, and what we have to do is actually structure this data, right? So um, when we pull this information from street view, none of it is structured. It's just a bunch of images. Um, and so we actually went through a process that I'll walk you through um, of structuring the data um, and actually creating clean training data that we were able to um, train our model with and get a pretty accurate model. Uh, so, and just to walk you through, there's actually a number of challenges that we saw. So, um, just in San Francisco alone, there's a, a wide variety of street signs. So, there's street cleaning, there's, um, you can park for two hours, one hour, no parking signs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It keeps going on, right? And so, this is um, a wide variety of issues that we want to try and solve for. 
Um, and then not only the parking signs, but there's also a lot of occlusion, right? So if you have trees growing on the street, oftentimes the parking signs are going to be occluded, and it's really difficult um, for a camera to see these from that might be mounted on a car. Uh, and so we want to be able to handle all these cases as well, so that um, again, we have the most robust system that's able to accurately tell you whether or not you're able to park in a given location. Um, and on top of that, it's a really messy world, right? So you can imagine all sorts of parking signs or gags or anything that people are trying to put up just so people won't park in front of their house, right? But it's a public spot, so you should be able to park there. Um, and so we want to try and avoid these sort of signs that don't actually mean anything when it comes to parking in that location. Um, so these are a few steps that we took to um, actually clean the data, get the right sorts of annotations that we needed. Uh, so when we downloaded the data, this is the type of data we got. They're all panoramic images. Um, and I'll show you um, how we actually went around collecting those images. But we um, collected a lot of them and then broke them into segments of images so that they're more digestible by a human. Uh, and then what we did is um, we have a human annotation platform at figure eight. And so we actually ran this data um, through a first pass to remove any erroneous data so that we can only focus on the images that do have parking signs. Uh, and once we were able to do this, then we went ahead and created the next job uh, where we had these humans label all uh, the signs in each of these images. Uh, and so by doing this, we're actually creating all of our training data and um, really streamlining it so that we don't have to actually manually um, identify where every single one of the boxes are. Um, and this is, again, one of the advantages of Figure 8 having a human platform so that we can quickly get a lot of this training data. Um, and so you guys know this data is actually available online. So you can go to this figure8.com slash data sets. And we have a number of this, including others um, with audio and open images um, that are free to download. And this is the data set that we actually use to train this. So um, we have almost 3,000 annotations of parking signs um, in this data set. So how did we go about building the models for the parking sign detection? Um, this is kind of a diagram of the sliding window detector. Uh, so you can see that you have your query image. Um, and then on this, we actually compute gradients to pull out the feature vectors for the sign. Uh, and then we had a SVM that was trained with a single class um, for the sign detection. And then we had a number of steps after to actually improve the accuracy of the model and remove false positives and um, avoid false negatives. Uh, and so here you can see um, that gradient feature extraction was, we used a 96 by 96 filter um, in these color spaces. Uh, and then we had uh, this linear SVM trained um, on a single class, which was just for parking signs. Um, and then using OpenCV to do all, all of our image processing. Um, and then these were the, um, some additional steps that we took to actually improve the results of the classifier. Um, so one of the things that we want to make sure is that um, any box that we saw only was associated with a single sign, and each sign only had one box. Um, so that's why whenever we had uh, more than 70% overlap of boxes, we actually removed um, one of those boxes. Um, and then we also had to mine for missing attributes so that we could remove the false negatives, um, and then using this SVM to actually improve the, uh, or reduce the false positive rate. Um, and then what we want to do on top of that is actually localize so that um, now you can detect the signs, but we want to know where is the sign located in the geography and what part of the street is that sign associated with. Um, and so the way that we did this is when we were collecting the data, you actually collect um, the same sign from multiple viewpoints. And so you can really triangulate where each sign is on the road. Um, and use that information to actually identify what parts of the street this sign is applicable to. And here you can see um, just some of the evaluations that we did. So we're able to um, identify where each of these parking signs are. Um, obviously, it's not perfect. So you can see that it's actually missed a sign. Um, but the, this is like what I said, the way that we collected the data is we um, selected uh, one mile by one mile areas in San Francisco. Um, and then we used the Google API to sell, select random coordinates within each of those regions um, and then pull a 20-meter radius of all the images. So within any given region, we had about 
um, 2,000 images that we downloaded. Um, and then, like I mentioned previously, we split those images up and then only extracted the parts that had parking signs in them and then sent those to the crowd to get them labeled. Um, so to walk you through the deep learning models, we actually used two models, uh, YOLO and SSD, to do our tests. Um, so YOLO is a you only look once, um, and this is a really lightweight classifier. So the idea is that you can classify a lot of images really quickly, um, and it's pretty good at low false positives. Um, however, with the SSD, although it's a little slower, you actually improve the accuracy generally. Um, and you'll see uh, better detections and uh, more accurate boxes um, come out of the SSD. Um, and so to show you the YOLO architecture, um, this is what we used. Um, so we had 19 convolutional layers and five max pooling layers. Um, for those of you that don't know, the convolutional layer is essentially like a, a matrix that you slide over the image um, and you run a function, a convolutional function on that um, to get basically a second image. Um, and then you use a max pooling layer and you can kind of vary the size of the max pool to take the maximum value. So based on these RGB values, um, you'll take the maximum and that's how you'll actually build out each of the layers of the network. Um, and then, um, so we had this pre-trained model that was trained on ImageNet and then we used a transfer learning and fine tuning to basically adapt that model for this specific use case. Um, and what we did there is we removed the last convolutional layer and replaced it with a three by three um, with the 1024 filters. Um, and then we ran this model through 160 epochs um, on all of our training data and then used our validation data to check. Um, and we actually went with a really low uh, learning rate and reduced that um, throughout the epochs. And that way we were able to um, really fine tune the whole network specifically for this um, parking sign use case. And this is actually um, from the preliminary test that we did with our validation data. We uh, saw some pretty good results. Um, so as you can see, the YOLO is, um, has a really high sensitivity, meaning that um, when there is a parking sign in an image, it's actually good at detecting that there's that parking sign there. And that's something that we, we were trying to optimize for so that we don't miss any of these images throughout, or any of, any of these parking signs throughout all of the images. Um, and here you can see um, some of the predictions. So you can see the box around each of the um, signs. Um, and we actually, it's, it's pretty robust. So it works on signs that are far away, um, as well as signs that were um, partially occluded. So um, we actually got some pretty good results there. Um, and then there's also these challenging cases. So um, oftentimes, depending on your um, field of view, um, you might have a very, very uh, acute view of the sign. Um, so this is something that we actually want to um, uh, attribute for if in our next round of data, um, is to actually have more of these cases so that we can detect the signs. Um, but one of the things with these cases is um, in the real world, you're gonna have a lot of this sorts of data. And even as humans, like when I look at that second image, I can't actually tell what's on the sign. I can't read any of it. I may be able to tell that it's a parking sign. Um, and so what we want to do is actually figure out smarter ways of not only detecting the signs, um, but figuring out how we can use different fields of view um, and different sorts of like camera locations to actually um, get the most out of our data that's um, on these signs. Um, and then when we, we also worked on a, a SSD, the single shot detector, um, and we actually used a different approach. So this one we went with the active learning approach. Um, so we did the same sort of, um, uh, normalization with the images initially. So we um, got the panoramics, we broke it up and took only the images that had um, parking signs in them. But instead of labeling all of the data and sending this through the model, um, we actually only selected 1% of the images and had those labeled from the crowd. Um, then what we did is we used the active learning approach to, we trained a, a preliminary model with this 1% of the data. And all of the other data, we fed it through the model each time. and as the data was classified, we used all the high confidence uh, um, uh, predictions. We just took those directly. And any low confidence predictions, we actually sent that back to the crowd um, for labeling. Um, and the idea here is that not only did we want to test out how we could build a, um, a predictor for parking signs, but we wanted to test an active learning approach to reduce the amount of data um, that was requi required. Um, so we actually did this, and we went through three rounds of results. Um, and as you can see, the results weren't as accurate as with the YOLO detector, 
Um, but we were able to use a lot less data and pay for less of that data. And so um, with active learning, you can actually spend a lot less. And depending on your application, that might be fine um, to have a lower accuracy if you can save a lot of money on the, on the crowd and labeling costs. Um, then what we did is we actually tested this on signs outside of San Francisco. So all of the data that we trained on were within SF. Um, but then we wanted to test in New York and LA. And as you can see, we were actually able to detect the signs. Um, but as we move on, what we would want to do is, reduce, is actually take the data from all of these cities individually and use a fine tuning and transfer learning approach so that we could build out specialized models for each of these cities. Um, because although the signs may look similar, they're actually quite different in their content, the types of street cleaning, types of parking um, rules. And so we would want to specialize um, these models depending on the city and country that you're in. Um, and so some of the future work that we're looking at is actually extracting the rules from this. So what we did with this first set of data was um, just to detect where the signs were. Uh, and now that you detect where the signs are, you actually want to pull out these um, extract the parking rules from this. And so this is kind of like an OCR task that we would want to do. Um, and understand, okay, what is the text on the signs and how are those rules correlated? So if and on any given day of the week, um, I'm gonna use my contextual information of like what time is it, where am I, what's the date, uh, and, uh, and know whether or not I'm able to park in those locations. And again, as you can see, there's a wide variety of text that can appear on signs. Um, so even parking at 90 degrees, right? You can actually get a ticket if, you, if you're not parked in the correct position. And so this is something that we want to account for in the future versions of this work. So just a couple things. Uh, we want to really improve the, the ability to detect these parking signs and then extract the rules. Um, and then use this in applied AI. So uh, get this into cars, get this into um, Ubers that are driving around the city that may have a lot of cameras uh, recording the data around them and use that to improve the accuracy of these models and actually deploy solutions so that when we do have autonomous cars, this is something that we're going to really want to use um, so that we are making sure the streets are safe and we actually have um, clear paths. Um, and additionally, we want to account for curbs. So this is something that's really big um, in uh, California is all the curbs are painted different colors. Um, so white means it's a loading zone, yellow means it's commercial, red is um, no parking. And so again, this has like really messy data as well. So as you can see uh, that top picture, um, that's actually a fake um, paint on the road that someone actually went in and painted so people won't park in front of their house. Um, and so it's actually pretty difficult to distinguish between the two and um, we can use AI to actually do that and make sure that we have the most robust system. Uh, so yeah, this is really a problem that we're looking to solve and um, I'm happy to take any questions.